flames out, water, flying ash, wasn't enough to do it. It still burns on December 1st, 2007. You see the steam and the smoke, strong smell of sulfur comes up from behind me. Truth is, you haven't seen anything yet. Since I was a kid, maybe around five, my dad would always bring me up here because he'd always come up here when he was a kid. They'd always, he'd always show me, you know, where the snow would melt and you could actually see down, see the glow at night. And I've always loved it to come up here. And finally, I brought some friends up because I always wanted to show them up. And I mean, from what I could still remember, ever when I was maybe around seven, there was about eight or nine homes up the ways past the cemetery. Now there's like maybe two, one, two. So now it's like, nothing's going on. I think they might still even have their fire department, but I'm not sure. But the government, every time somebody moves out, nobody wants it. They just buy up the land. You know, I mean, nobody's taken it. Nobody's done anything with it. I know there's talks that they want to take some, see if they can stop the fires. Henceforth, if you ever see up the, all the exhaust and all the vents and stuff. But they want to try to extinguish it. But no way it's going to get extinguished. I think actually it's a vein that runs here, or even might even run into Shenandoah, or something. But other than that, this road's been abandoned, God, since the 80s. It's been forever since anybody's used this. They've always directed it down through the valley. A coal is an amazing source of fuel and amazing source of fire, but when toyed with, this is what happens. Nobody actually knows how this started. They thought somebody might have lit a fire to burn some garbage or something close to a vent that caught into the vein. Or some kids might have been up here playing around and they caught it on. I honestly don't know how long it's been going, the fire's been going. But I know it's been going for a while. The fire was started in a garbage dump over an open coal seam in May of 1962. Forty-six years later, the fire still burns today. You can definitely feel the heat, too, I coming off it. the ground. I feel it. I'm starting to feel it through my shoes. Well, you can, you 122 can, over here. 122? So the ground's varying in temperature, which yeah. means, I guess, the hot spots are varying, too. In 1983, there was fire under about 350 surface acres. By 91, the area had been increased by about three-quarters. Worst case scenario would be about 3,700 acres and possibly 100 years. 26 homes along Route 61 west of town were bought in April of 1991. There were no future plans to fight the fire. The population of Centralia, as of 1997, was 44 people and has dwindled to 11 today. What did I say the temperature was out here? What's the air temperature? temperature? It's like 20... 27. 27 degrees, okay. One forty. One forty one. One forty one. That is one what was it? One fifty what? One fifty three. One fifty three. Wow. This piece of wood is kind of, it's damp too. Yes, it's very damp. So look at the moss growing on the side. You can tell it stays pretty damp in there. Here, on the side of it. That's right. How's the shooting? Alright, what we do is we put, we put a small piece of shale yep. like that right over the vent. Tallest 
place in Centralia. It's cold. It's about maybe 30 degrees. And there's no fire up here. So I'm going back down. Yeah, it's just a giant pile of coal. This thing will burn forever. It's about 9.40 a.m. on December 2nd. As you can see, we had a little white snow come in last night, which kind of works out nice. This way it kind of demonstrates how the heat is on the ground here. We're surprised to see that it's a little bit localized and where the the snow actually melts where your heat source is. We were expecting, or at least I was expecting, more of the road to be kind of thawed out. Uh, but it looks like it's pretty much confined right here to where this main crevice is in the old portion of Route 61. We got about, maybe about an inch of a light powdery snow last night. So you can see where most of the heat's centralized at here. Pretty much all the rest of the road. You got some areas where the snow's a little bit thinner, but uh, for the most part, it, it's, it's pretty much an even covering of snow, just like everywhere else in this area. We are now going to attempt to fry this egg on this rock that we put in place yesterday. So if I can have your attention down here, drum roll. As the yolk begins to break, what you're reading on the actual yolk itself? The egg itself is 52 degrees. So, we may have to call in for pizza. Now, how hot is that rock? 141. 141 is pretty warm. I think I'm going to move the rock and let the egg slide down in the hole. Oh, that's hot. Oh. It is actually cooking as it goes down the hole. You smell fried egg? The measurement's going to be from here to the D. So I'm going to put it on the inside of the crack here to the inside of the crack there. We've got what? We're measuring at 35 and a half inches. 35 and a half. Okay. Our second measurement, about uh, pretty close to the middle of the crevice, we've got an A that's been sprayed on in red paint. We've got an I in green paint. We're going to measure the crevice from end to end in between those two letters. Right now we've got 29 inches from end to end of the crevice between the A and the I. There's no exact science to the fire, to how it's burning, to how it's affecting the road. So it could be weeks, could be months, could be years. But I'm quite certain that this thing will begin to grow, get deeper, wider, to eventually where it all just kind of caves in.